Hello and welcome to Man and Biscuit episode number eight. I am RJ Velosky and we have uh, a new co-host on the show with us, uh, TJ. Uh, say hello to the people. How you doing, my, my man? Hi. Hi. Doing good. <laughs> All right. And also with us is still, uh, we can't get rid of him, uh, Jacob Gamble. Uh, <laughs> Jacob, how you doing, man? Yeah, as you might. <laughs> doing well, man. Doing real well. All right. So. All right. Yeah, Jacob, uh, we were, this is, the show notes this week have pretty much uh, been between you and TJ, so I will let you guys take it away, but I think we wanted to talk about World of Warcraft first, right? Yes, that's the first thing we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, World of Warcraft subscriber base dropping to a near all-time low. Not right. quite what it was at the tail end of uh, Miss of Pandaria, but it's close. And although there are good things on the horizon with 6.2, um, they just really not much going on. And well, yeah. Why? So, so yeah, you have the, um, there's been a lot of talk about it and I've mentioned it on the show before I play two nights a week with my raid team. That's why I play wow. The rest of the game, I don't care about one way or the other. Uh, I, I, I play for the people, but in general, yeah, these garrisons, the garrison missions, I mean, they're obvious mobile game, uh, you know, retention mechanics. And and I don't think that they had a lot of the staying power that, 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 that Blizzard was perhaps hoping that they would. That being said, you know, the 3 million drop, you had a bunch of people excited for a new expansion. And I, I think they got more into that than, uh, more out of that than they were expecting. And then back to business as usual so i don't know uh i still play wow i think jay you log in uh jacob you log I, in on occasion yeah I tj occasion when's the last time you played wow i i haven't played wow in probably uh four years no i'm four years clean yeah four uh, years clean <laughs> <laughs> because uh i like i look back on my time uh playing world of warcraft the same way that I imagine a, uh, a recovered heroin addict looks back at I with dope because it yeah. seemed like a lot of fun at the time, but I made some really poor decisions. Well, right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 definitely has that reputation, and there are parts of the game that can draw people in for that level of addiction. Like I said, for me, it's two nights a week. I log in for a couple hours raid with, uh, you know, 10 to 15 people that I really enjoy hanging out with, and that's it. I log off. That's worth my 15 bucks a month. Um but uh yeah so on the whole uh i don't think any of us were like you know screaming the, sc the sky is falling like maybe some uh some wow bloggers uh, or redditors out there i have seen but you know that's also just the internet being the internet uh so yeah i mean it's it's big it's a big number but and it's it's certainly newsworthy but uh uh yeah okay i think we lost some video from tj but he should be back soon uh which is good because i think uh unless anybody else had anything they wanted to say about wow um you guys were gonna talk some comic books next right uh yeah marvel uh the mcu is doing a reduction with the end of the uh new secret wars and uh TJ was supposed to take lead on that, so... Um, yeah, it's uh, TJ. Let's... TJ, give us the rundown. What's going on with this? Because you're our comics expert. All right, are you... Can you hear us? He's not there. Uh, he's, he's going in and out. No, I don't think... Oh, sorry. I think they're all on the internet. <laughs> sorry about that. No problem. Okay. All right, so, yeah, I think... Anyway, so it was a big reduction in titles, a big reduction in um, uh, in characters. Uh, we were talking about before the show how uh, there's also the politics. Um, was it uh, Jacob the uh, the politics between um, um, Fox and Marvel Studios? Uh, they they're killing the Fantastic Four uh, simply right. based on the fact that they don't want to promote the movie. Um, they've gone from mutants to Inhumans for right. the sake of not giving any more X Men to the uh, to Fox Studios. Um, it, it's a, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of cat and mouse and a lot of just it, yeah. I, it, the only people that are really losing here, honestly, are those that love comics. Yeah. And, I, I, yeah, I, I guess I guess you could see that. I mean, it's it's frustrating from my perspective because I don't read a lot of superhero comics anymore. I you know I'm I'm content 
with and I've mentioned this before I'm, I'm content with the movies I'm content with the TV shows because they're doing a fantastic job with them uh, but somebody who does keep up with the comics uh, you know TJ uh, do we have you back yet TJ I hope so okay right, yeah I think I think we go uh, we got you back so go ahead and give us the rundown uh, on uh, on what all is happening with what Marvel's cutting and all that well, they're cutting down the line really substantially, which I think is actually a pretty good move because uh, there's a lot of comics out there and it's difficult, especially with the how crossover, crossover heavy things have gotten. It's difficult to keep up a lot of the time. Uh, but I think the, the big portion of what they're doing, aside from, as Jane mentioned, uh, negating any possible free advertisement for uh, properties they don't own, is uh, a kind of uh, crisis on Infinite Earth style uh, reset of all of the multiple universes in the way that they get really convoluted. Uh, sure. So which I think is necessary. Absolutely. Uh, so um, Jacob mentioned that uh, they're dropping Fantastic Four. Now, are they dropping all of the X Men properties, or? No, I don't think they could do that at this point. Yeah, so I think they're, not, they're yeah. not at the mid '90s level of like you know, 2.5 million issues sold or whatever. Right. But it's still a big money maker for them. And I don't think they can afford it. The only reason they can afford to do it with Fantastic Four is because it's not that heavily purchased of a book. Right, right. right. Yeah. Same with Deadpool. Uh, they're also ending Deadpool. Well, Deadpool again, has always, property. you know, I like I said, I don't follow this as much as Jacob, certainly not as much as TJ, but my understanding is Deadpool's always been kind of an off again, off again, on again type of run. Yeah. Yeah, that one started a, one of my favorite four issue uh the four issue uh miniseries was actually the first one for Deadpool in the nineties, ninety two, ninety three, yeah, right somewhere in there. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, so right around the uh the beginning of his partnership with cable and all that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, so sorry about that little blip there. We had some technical issues, but TJ is back. Uh, we have his uh, video as well as his voice, and that is perfect for what we want to do next because uh, TJ has been a friend of Jacob and I for years. We wanted to get him on the show because we know he's been watching this show, and he has lots to talk about about the sort of stuff that we talk about. So I know you mentioned specifically the video game Hall of Fame last week, but don't necessarily limit yourself to that. Anything that we've talked about that you want to rant on and add your two cents, this is your chance, sir. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. All uh, right, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, did it look like I dropped that again? Yeah, yes. Almost, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, hopefully that won't happen. Uh, the first thing, obviously, like you mentioned, was the uh, the video game Hall of Fame. Uh, the first part that I wanted to bring up was uh, my opinion on the Angry Birds debate that took up so much of the episode. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, and... Uh, Oh, I see. I see the look on Jay's face because he suspects <laughs> that I am going to rail against him, and I am. <laughs> oh my God! Really? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. I would like to. I would like to put a preamble at the beginning of this thing that I don't particularly care for Angry Birds. I don't find it a terribly compelling game, and I can totally see why somebody would think that that uh, doesn't necessarily belong in a video game Hall of Fame. But. Uh, the things that it did that are going to dramatically change the industry of video gaming are uh, twofold. Uh, well, more than that, but the two that I really want to touch on. Uh, the first one being that that right there was the first time where, uh, as a cultural phenomenon, it became apparent that from here on out, everyone is a gamer. Because everybody that doesn't think of themselves as a gamer because they don't play PC games and they don't own a console, everybody, your mom, your grandma, your kids and sisters, everybody plays mobile games now. And that is a huge stride towards the legitimacy of games as a medium. Uh, And it's something that can't be overlooked. Uh, The second point uh, is that it wasn't necessarily the first, but it was the most successful at revealing an entire new way of monetizing video games. And I don't like it, but uh, microtransactions and in-app purchases are two things that are going to change the face of gaming 
change it utterly. And I understand that it's not necessarily uh, desirable because I don't, like I said, I don't like it, but it's something that we can't ignore the ramifications of. Uh, and for those two reasons, I think that looking back at, at something like this 10 years from now, we're going to see exactly how much Angry Birds changed the face of video games. Uh, and that's what a Hall of Fame game should do. Absolutely. Uh, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have to be the most fun thing. It has to be something that uh, changes the, the face of gaming as a whole. Sure. No, uh, I think, I think uh, that was a big part of the point I was trying to make. So I'm glad you came on the show to team up on Jay uh, with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because this hasn't happened before, you know. <laughs> Give me the gun. <laughs> yeah we've been there um okay uh, so uh, yeah that's that yeah i'm with you on that anything else that you had to say on uh on the hall of fame or angry birds uh, or something thing. go the ahead thing, and you both you both mentioned doom on your uh your like top eight more right yeah if we, if we were gonna cut it out yeah cut it down yep yeah. uh we uh, yeah we both had doom there yeah and it seemed, I don't know, strange to me that it was low, almost an afterthought on both of your lists when you look back at it and recognize that Doom created an entire genre and probably the most dominant genre of gaming right now. Because for a long time, there wasn't FPSs, it right. was Doom clones. Yeah, I, I I would have to I would have to get to Wikipedia to double check the dates on this, but I believe uh, it was predated by Wolfenstein yeah. 3D. Wolfenstein, yeah, yes. Wolfenstein which Wolfenstein was the first. Doom by far and away more popular. Clones. Yes, yeah, it yeah. was Doom clones. It was Doom clones. Yeah, and well, that for me, uh, at least for me, of it, of it being an afterthought. I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's an afterthought. It is an acknowledgement of how important that is. But I've said many times. On the show, I'm not a shooter fan. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, we we had I there. I enjoy playing just about any kind of game with friends, and I, you know, and and we had some great times with the uh, old daisy chained Xbox lands uh, that we used <laughs> to put together with Halo back in the day. So, you know, Halo still has some interest to me, but I'm not out there buying every Call of Duty. I'm not buying the newest Battlefield. That's just not my yeah but uh no you're you're absolutely right yeah doom uh yeah doom wasn't the first it wasn't the one that i watched my dad play because my mom wouldn't let us play shooters when i was a kid <laughs> but uh uh my dad my dad really loved to play wolfenstein so i just sit and watch him play it for hours but anyway uh my mom didn't care for that either but i guess she wasn't as vehement about stopping it but um yeah so doom okay probably could have talked that up a little bit more uh, in terms of its uh, significance. Uh, anything else you wanted to add on that? Uh, one last thing, and it's just a minor thing, because you guys brought up uh, the uh, the Space Invaders versus Pac-Man. Right. Which one was bigger? Right. Uh, I don't know if you remember this story, and it might be apocryphal, but I believe it's actually backed up. But didn't Space Invaders cause a quarter, a quarter shortage? I, like you couldn't get quarters. Now you see, you say often. that, and it, it rings familiar to me, but I don't know see, if I that's it was an urban that, legend. Deal. And I thought it was Pac-Man. I thought it was Pac-Man that the story. An urban uh, and it, it might be, uh, but I thought, uh, like you said, I thought it was Pac-Man that did that. So that kind of, it might have been space. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna find out. Um, yeah. Live research. Um, yeah, so oh, it was the it was the hundred yen coin. It was in Japan. It was, it was in Japan. Corners. It was the yen coin. A hundred yen shortage, and uh, was it Space Invaders then? Yes, yes, it was okay. Space Invaders, and it was Japan. All right, fair enough. Okay, well, uh, that's uh, that's that. Now, one of the things that that Jacob and I have talked about doing in the past, um, and I. Uh, I still want to do uh, is getting together a daredevil spoiler cast where we just talk about the entire run on Netflix. Oh, oh man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Jacob has to, Jacob wow. has to stop working um, so much and actually finish it first uh, before we can well, do that. <laughs> but uh, you, you were like two episodes in or something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I actually. Uh, have, so you, you still yeah. Remain two okay. Episodes in. I will. Oh, and, oh yeah, I, and it really oh. starts taking off in like the third or fourth episode. Once, once Vincent D'Onofrio hits his stride, that show. Oh yes. my goodness. They should have sent a poet. Um, well, I, I said it when we when I first ran through that cast. Yeah. I got all sorts. Of yes, excited you did, with that and you have yet to watch like, long enough to see him I develop. Know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I know. get on that. But anyway, all that to say, um, uh, we talked several episodes about Daredevil, and uh, you mentioned that a bit in the pre-show as well. Um, that, that you had some things you wanted to kind of go back and talk about with Daredevil as well. Uh, the the first thing was that I was like I mentioned in the we were yeah we were surprised that we didn't Frank know Frank Miller, Miller. yeah <laughs> fair enough yeah like, but you are the comics all, expert all of the things all of the things on the list I'm like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know that, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is and this is just a it's a non spoilery thing about Daredevil that I learned recently that like really uh, kind of tickled me. Uh, they released the list with a graph of people who tuned in to their original programming on Netflix mm -hmm. and uh, how many people over so many days and so on and so forth. And the graph for Daredevil was amazing because it started out pretty strong and then it dipped a little bit the second day and then just skyrocketed. It was ridiculous. Wow. And then it, at, it slowly dropped off until about a week later and i'm like i wonder why that is and it occurred to me all of a sudden like it's because everybody had already binge watched the entire thing within like six days uh and i'm really i'm a big fan of data yeah. as something that is like interesting and so getting an opportunity to look at those charts was really fascinating and anybody that uh that likes that sort of thing might want to take a glance at them absolutely themselves. yeah and yeah it's it, it is I, it's not the fastest show I've ever binge watched on Netflix, but that was because I was loving it so much I did not want it to be over. And I, I'm rarely able to show that level of self-control in binge watching, but I knew it was a short run and I knew it, it will be, well, at the time I was watching it, it hadn't been renewed yet. It got renewed like the day after I finished it. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, but uh, um, yeah, I, I, I just, it was so, so good. And I mean, like, Orange is the New Black, some of these other Netflix shows, you know, I'll watch the season in two days and be done with it. But I actually managed to just, like, cut myself off no more than three episodes in a day with Daredevil and, and uh, spread it out over a few days. But, yeah, so, so like good. Yeah, so, so good. So, so good. Um, all right, so. Keep rubbing it in. Well, you Keep know what, man? You know what, man? <laughs> you, you can watch, watch it. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you yeah, just it's just watch. Only it. life were that simple. I I know. Fully I know. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you uh, had something you wanted to talk about, though. Oh, go ahead, TJ. No, yeah. I was like hopefully soon you will have you know less uh, work obligations and more Daredevil obligations. That's and right. More Daredevil <laughs> obligations. Yeah. Yes, the the, the show yeah. is becoming a priority faster and faster, or mostly based on the fact that I really, really want. To do nothing but dive into a bunch of comic books and everything yeah. else after all of this so yeah i have daredevil to look forward to still okay well you have <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair point that's a fair point <laughs> That's a fair point. Okay. So you, the moving along then, the other thing that uh, you talked about that you wanted to touch on was uh, something that happened to a hacker in Guild Wars 2. Yep, the way that this went down is is that this guy was more or less ter terrorizing world PvP via hack for about three weeks until he was finally caught by the uh, admins, stripped down to nothing more than his uh, swords and boxers, ran through the town and up to the tallest building and dropped into a uh well his landing spot was ultimately the sewers um <laughs> dead. um and then banned which uh, to all of this i say kudos and yeah. thank you um i i am i am a huge fan of the I'm a huge fan of the concept, the idea of publicly shaming these people that ultimately are causing so much grief. Um, but it, it does it. Some people have questioned whether or not just 
why not just ban him? Why go to that extent? And I, it, it's one of those things where is was it too much? I just I don't think it was, but uh, I, I don't think it. Yeah, there, I don't. Some people yeah. out there are saying that it's just too much, and I'm well, posting the video as we speak. Uh, <laughs> what's funny? <laughs> It's not like it's the U.S. like justice system, There's right? No cruel and unusual <laughs> right. Look, man. Just, look, man. Like, pixels have rights kid. too. Yeah, and <laughs> apparently pixels have rights. They bleed the same uh, as us. Uh, all all yeah. that good stuff. But no, it's uh, it, 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 it's one of those things where I I kudos i loved it i thought it was hilarious and i will i i have it up and i'm going to well, post I, it yeah and i think i think something it, like that shows that um obviously players hate cheaters right but um sometimes when cheaters are able to get the better of devs players will also assume that devs don't care about cheaters so mm -hmm. when they do something like this you realize that no no devs hate cheaters too they yeah and uh, I mean, a, d a developer was a gamer before he was a developer and ultimately well, in the most case yeah in, in most cases case, yeah. so uh, yeah. go ahead are you no go ahead are you done with yeah that? i'm done with that one i'm okay, done with that one i wanted to segue and it's kind of looping back around to the beginning because we also brought up another video a wow video uh, oh January yeah, January, January, that's January. right. <laughs> Leroy uh, 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 Yeah. For those of you that are questioning why we're bringing it up today is uh, I believe it's today is the tenth anniversary of the Leroy Jenkins uh, mm. incident. Which means we're uh, all really freaking <laughs> old. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> That is yeah. exactly what I thought. Wow, yeah. I, I, I mean, Leroy Jenkins, right? So yeah, he, good, so uh, he, he's, he had a uh, trading card in the, in the TCG. Um, he had mm -hmm. a Jeopardy question. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think as recently as uh, probably five or six weeks ago, I was sitting around um, knocking back a couple of brews, and I'm like, you know what would be funny to go watch again? that Leroy Jenkins video. And you know what? It holds up. It does. <laughs> yes, uh, it does. He's also a, uh, a follower in Garrison. Yes, he is. Yep. Yes. yes. He's, he's yep. obtained through a dungeon quest in none other than Upper Black Rock Spire. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually did complete that uh, early on in the expansion. I was playing a little bit more than just two days a week, and I did complete that. And it's, it's a great quest. I mean, you know, you, you wake him up, and he's like, huh? what's going on and, and uh he's like oh i'm here i got my shoulders let's go and the idea is to just keep him alive by speed running through the dungeon uh to his particular boss as quickly as possible mm -hmm. so it's, it's really appropriate and uh hey. yep he's he's been on many missions for me since then awesome. yes <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think that about covers everything we talked about in the uh, the pre-show. So I think uh, that's that's about it. We had all we had for this week. Um, any any final thoughts? Uh, opinions? Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Uh, for, I've got one because as I'm going through uh, Portal Two, Doctor Who, Back to the Future, and Simpsons Legos. Oh, well, there you go. They, so these are yes. new licenses for. For the big uh, plastic interlocking uh, brick would be Monopoly in uh, was it Sweden? Yeah. Sweden. Are they in Sweden? Sweden or Sweden or Switzerland? Sweden. I'm Sweden. pretty sure it's somewhere in Scandinavia. So if it's if yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's somewhere. It's look, look, people, we're Americans. We're Americans, all right. It's 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 European. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, in in all earnestness, I'm pretty sure it's Switzerland. But you know, someday we'll have enough viewers that I will be called out terribly for making mistakes yes. if I'm wrong. Yes. Right. So and in the meantime. In For the, the meantime, we don't. So it's 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 Sweden. So <laughs> it's Sweden. Right. Um, I'm actually not terribly. The only thing I'm surprised about that is uh, that it took them this long. I thought yeah. everything had already been yeah. licensed by Lego. Like I'm pretty sure I got a letter at one point saying I'm licensed by Lego. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Well, I, there's. Uh, I don't know if you guys watch this uh, series on YouTube uh, called the Idea Channel. 
uh, from PBS. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike Rignetta on the Idea, Ch Idea Channel about a month and a half ago did a uh, video on the Lego movie and what it says about licensing and, you know, the idea of freedom of intellectual property versus lockdown. And it, it, the, the the his his position was that the theme of the movie was kind of anti copyright ish. I, that's a gr gross oversimplification of it, but more or less anti copyright. Meanwhile, Lego is the giant that is built on copyrights by because they have licenses to everything under the sun. They used to have a patent on the plastic interlocking brick, which until yep. that that uh, expired in the 90s, they didn't have any competition for the license. And now you get things like Mega Block Halo, which, you know, whatever. Oh, Halo, we oh. have Harry Potter, Star Wars and Doctor Who, you know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> that, I yeah. actually own the Mega Black Hagen. Well, that's uh, fine. You know, I, I, I'm glad I gave I, you a chance to bring that out. Where's your yeah. Where's your speeder bike? Where's your speeder? I don't have a speeder bike. Oh. Jake, Jacob, you have failed. Ouch. <laughs> um, I've got. So, hold on. Hold yeah. that thought. All hold right. On. This one is cool because we didn't. You brought up Mega Black, but you didn't bring up the Creo, which okay. is a complete off brand. But right. You'll appreciate this one. Go for <laughs> it. All right. So. So yeah, so TJ. Um, oh no, he's got it. Oh my goodness! Yes, the Creo Star Trek. Oh, <laughs> the USS what? Vengeance. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I had never ever Starship. heard of a Creo before. Now. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, Seventy-five percent off at one point in time. It stars at uh, unsurprising. Rush, we unsurprising. We have been there, and it looked decidedly cool. We, as we, you can see, it's still sitting in its package. But uh, we Star Trek yeah. fans are few but proud, so <laughs> it's unsurprising yeah. that it was seventy-five percent off. Yeah, yeah, very, very few. <laughs> it doesn't seem like um, a terribly non-valuable license. You would think that Lego or at least Mega Block would have gone after it. It depends on yeah. whether or not they. Uh, I mean, I actually still worked at Toys R Us when the first uh, Star Trek movie came out, and most of those toys went to clearance, at which point I bought a lot of them. Really? And, yes. Aww. I bought a lot of them on clearance. <laughs> but uh, A lot of my Magic the Gathering toys have been bought on clearance. Yeah, um, so. Like the little action figures of Chandra and Nyssa and Jace. Yeah, those I I think I see those at uh, Barnes and Noble all the time, and so yep. they're they're headed Bought for them fifty percent off. Yeah, yep. So, yeah, uh, pick those up. Um, yeah, a lot so of specifically about this like. this news, then um, let's see. So they picked up the Doctor Who set. So I think a Lego Tardis set is definitely in my future. I mean, hopefully mm -hmm. I can get a Lego Tardis set that's not some uh, gigantic ridiculousness and is actually you know somewhat budget conscious because the bigger lego sets can be quite expensive i will I, yeah, yeah so. the, well, i mean i almost bought a what was it a three foot i believe it was three foot tall at maybe it was a foot and a half tall uh at at um which was uh, like it was that 25 percent off was still 170 some odd dollars or something like that and I still was sitting there debating, debating. I spent probably 20 minutes just staring at it, thinking about how cool it would be, and then ultimately wound up with not <laughs> so tall. <laughs> so, it's all right, <laughs> man. It's all right. It's the thought that counts. Yeah. They, 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 yeah. Anyway, yeah. but the Doctor Who Tardis <laughs> excites me. Um, ultimately, I, I'm I, I really like the idea of the portal ones. I I mean they, those. Yeah, that... but like how how can you replicate the joy yeah. of portal with like an actual physical object? I have a f I, 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 I don't think you can. I have a feeling if you could, somebody would have created portal out of Minecraft. And I mean, yeah. Which, who knows, they might have because there are all kinds of uh, code mods out there for it that let you do weird things. I've seen, I, speaking of Doctor Who, I've seen the TARDIS done in Minecraft where they used a mod that set vision sights. So it literally was a TARDIS that was huge on the inside, but you could walk around it on the outside and it was just a TARDIS. Awesome. Yeah. So, that is cool. 
Um, anyway, moral of the story is anything can be done in Minecraft, so Portal will probably be in Minecraft if it's not already. Uh, but not I mean, in Legos. Minecraft or Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, all right. And not to get too tangential here, but um, one of the interesting stories I saw come across a couple of weeks ago is that Microsoft's, the reason Microsoft bought Minecraft, well, one of the big reasons is they had HoloLens in mind. So taking the game Minecraft, which is basically Legos in a computer, but putting it in HoloLens where you can just basically play with virtual Legos on any surface. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I know the future will be an exciting time, my friends. Um, so, oh. <laughs> yep. Um, all right. So, I guess I guess we can probably wrap it up unless I'll anybody just, had some final thoughts. I'll just. I'm just gonna starve to death when that happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've got to build the castle to keep the creepers in the forest. <laughs> TJ, that's a coffee uh, table. Uh, no! <laughs> oh, okay, well, on uh, that note, on that note, yeah. Uh, anything final from uh, from you, Jacob, or, uh, or TJ? I, the, the Legos thing was the only thing that I was finding while I was frantically searching for material because I stopped right there and went, this is Fair exciting enough. to me. Yeah. Um, Aside from that, TJ, got anything? Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Well, uh, uh, thanks for coming, yeah, and uh, we'll see. We'll, you'll you'll be back next week. Uh, this is this yes, has been be fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Jacob and I have been having a good time, but you know, it's better with three, and we'll figure out the technology <laughs> end of it a little bit better. So uh, that's it. That's going to be it for uh, this week's uh, Man of Biscuit. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please visit us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Man of Biscuit TV and follow us on Twitter at Man of Biscuit TV. Remember to like the video and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, you can follow us for live streams on twitch.tv slash Man of Biscuit. Your support means so much to us. It really does. Thank you for uh, TJ Rathburn and uh, Jacob Gamble. I am RJ Velosky. Say bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.